Okay, just firstly, um, this is the first of a series of monthly events. The New South Wales Committee is very diligently in the last few years tried to hold something every month, a free event, and this is the first one for 2023. Um, so um, in planning uh, tentatively, um, we'll be in March, March 30, um, on international aid, aid and evaluation, and Karen, uh, one of the other committee members, will be looking after that. And then April 27th, which I will be certainly signing up for, the politics of recommendations, um, which as evaluators would know. And there's a few other things we're throwing around as possible topics. And one of, at the end of today, if you hang around or have a Mentimeter survey where we're always keen to get people's ideas around things. But um, New South Wales um, evaluation um, guidelines, um, the red hot topic of um, artificial intelligence, um, chat GPT and the like, um, I've flirted with it, and um, I'm very concerned about the future of consultants with chat with Jet GVT. Luckily, I'm um, even nearing the end of my career. Good old uh, randomised controlled trials. Um, flo has been talking to um, people in Canberra and elsewhere about possibly doing something on that. Um, criminal justice system reform, I think that should be, an evaluation. Um, NGOs and evaluation and uh, and performance audit versus evaluation. But none of these are locked in, and we're very keen to hear um, other other um, possible topics. Okay, so today just going to give a quick overview of uh, what the evaluator program is, um, including some you know snapshot of some of the results from the evaluation that we of course did last year of the pilot, um, and then we'll get some more qualitative perspectives on it from uh, some some of the participants in last year's program, um, and. And we'll hear from them shortly. So I think Laura might um, introduce those. And then we'll just go through the mechanics if you are interested um, or want to share this um, with other people about um, how, how to apply. So the idea for this uh, was born a couple of years ago where the committee said, look, we want to provide some opportunities for peer learning, drawing on the experience that exists within the um, the network of people that we have and you know and, and while structured training and workshops and the like have a pl place we just thought this as being another another option so Laura and I ran some focus groups with members to, to test the level of interest and what emerged out of the, uh, the program was um, a value add um, cheesy name um, so a buddying program and we are distinguishing it from the national mentoring program the AES runs, which um, is a is a group mentoring program with fellows from the AES. Uh, you have to be a fellow to uh, participate in that, and um, it's it's a much more structured and rigorous and resource intensive program. Fabulous in its own way. This one is very much a light touch, and need to make that clear. That well, our job we see is to try and get match people up, provide a structure, match people up, and then leave it up to them to go on their respective path as to uh, what they want to get out of it. So <clears throat> it's all about building evaluation skills and capabilities in the broadest sense. Um, and that could be technical skills or about organisational change or change management or dealing with internal politics or, or whatever, or how to uh, do better program uh, logic models or theories of change. Um, again, that's entirely up to the what, what people want to get out of it. So by pairing buddies uh, who can then seek guidance, support from their their mentor or evaluator. <clears throat> um, the roles of the evaluators are to work with your buddy via a series of you know, informal meetings, <clears throat> support them to build their evaluation skills and capabilities, and yeah, open and willing uh, to share your professional experiences, learnings, and so on. Um, the buddies are seen as the ones critically driving it. Um, the evaluate process, uh, so initiating and structuring meetings and trying to set learning goals without being too, you know, dogmatic about that because things often do emerge over time and obviously being open and willing to learn. So in the pilot program, we had um, 11, 11 uh, pairs um, <coughs> um, and all... Um, all buddies were female, interestingly, but there was a, um, a pretty good agenda split on the um, evaluators or mentors side. So we did a, 
you know, a not, not too rigorous evaluation, but we had some midterm surveys, some focus groups, a post-program survey. Um, and overall, with the reason why we're running this is again, because the, uh, the findings were very positive. So, you know, the vast majority of people, um, nearly all in fact, saw the, the program as either being very beneficial or beneficial. And the sorts of things, and we'll hear about people's personal experience in a moment, but the sorts of things that people did uh, talk about is acquiring um, new skills, um, learning things that they um, from their from their evaluators and their um, and, and mentors um, across that spectrum of technical skills through to um, through to more generic capabilities, I guess. Now, I think at that point I will hand over to. Um, Laura, and I'll stop sharing, I think. Great, thanks, Greg. Um, hi, everyone. Um, we thought this would be a great opportunity to hear from, uh, as Greg mentioned, some previous uh, evaluators or mentors and buddies that were involved in the pilot of the program last year, um, just so you can get a little bit of context of how the program worked, what they uh, went into the program with and, and what they came out with. Um, so this is your opportunity to understand more, to ask your questions, to become a little bit more familiar with the program. So please drop any of the questions that you have in chat and we'll monitor that as we go along. Um, I do have a couple of questions to get us started, but, um, but please add in yours. Um, so I'd like to introduce uh, Duncan and Flo, who were two of the mentors that took place in the program last year. If you could give us a, a wave, please. Um, and then we have Rachel and Tamsin. I'm not sure if she's been able to join. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks for the wave. Um, so I'll just ask a couple of questions, but feel free to, to jump in if you've got something extra you want to say. Um, so maybe Flo and Duncan, if we start with you, uh, what made it motivated you to take part in the pilot last year? And Duncan, you're off mute, so you're first off the off the box. I'm just the girl who can't say no. <laughs> um, I, look, I was interested in, um, I, look, I have a long, um, long standing passion for evaluation capacity building. It's like, it's my jam. And, uh, and I, so I tend to say yes to any opportunities that are um, creating space for um, developing the next generation. And part of that is because I was well mentored and supported um, myself in my first 10 years of, um, of work. And uh, yeah, and I feel like there's an obligation for people who have been cared for to care for others. So that's like, that's a kind of, in, that's, that's my internal motivation. Uh, Cause and I, I worked at a, um, at a big, consulting company for my first 10 years at a company called Urbis um, and had lot, access to lots of mentoring and support professional development and all the encouragement in the world and really benefited from that. But I'm just aware that not everybody has that in their world. There are some people who are like, you are the evaluation person in your organization and that, that can be pretty lonely and isolating. And so I, yeah, I just have a, a kind of general ethic that, you know, to those who much has been given, much is expected and that's a fair thing. And so, um, uh, and so that's what I do. Fantastic. Hello. Thank you. It's a great sense of giving back there. Well, I would love to hear your motivations as well. Um, yes, I think, um, I guess it was the right time in my sort of uh, evaluator's life. Um, mm -hmm. I also quite um, enjoy um, evaluation sort of capacity building and had touched on different approaches in particular, you know, uh, most recently uh, a few years ago around building a community of practice, but not less so at the individual level. Uh, so really enjoyed the, um, you know, sharing your expertise, tips, experience um, from, from uh, different areas, you know, consulting, government. Um, and so realizing that you actually have something useful to say and to bring to people uh, in a group environment. But I was also looking at doing that at a, at a more um, individual level. Um, and yes, had I guess enough started to feel that I had enough experience to give something useful to somebody who had a, who was at a, a different um, uh, time in their evaluation journey and, and also share um, this sort of passion, really real interest um, with with, um, with somebody with Tam. 
Fantastic. Well, that's a great segue. Um, Tam, what did you, uh, why did you get involved in the program? What motivated you? Well, I, I was moving into my first um, uh, mostly evaluation job from more of a research background. And I had done some training, but um, uh, I, I was kind of feeling like an imposter. And, <laughs> and so I, I, I learned well from men through mentoring. And um, luckily the timing was just right and, um, and I was able to join the program and, and luckily scored floor off. Um, I can't call you Flo yet. I just can't do it. <laughs> but I'm trying it's great. Uh, That's funny because most people can't pronounce floral. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. How many so months did it take before you allowed to stop calling him Monsieur Ganez? <laughs> 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 uh, I never did that. <laughs> great. Uh, Thank. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, that's all. That's all. Thank you. And what about you, Rachel? Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, kind of similar, actually, um, to Tam. I had definitely had that feeling of imposter, being an imposter and Im imposter syndrome. Um, and like Dunk was saying before, I was the, I was half of a team of two in a, a big organisation um, in an evaluation and research unit and had come more from the research space. And um, I guess kind of felt like I'd fallen into an evaluation role, which I think a lot of people seem to feel like they have. Um, and I had, so the, the other lady I was working with was a, a really fantastic mentor for me in, in our workplace um, and very applied evaluation, but I didn't really have much of an understanding of what, um, of the scope of the field of evaluation, I guess. And so I was really interested in talking to someone and, and getting some mentorship in, um, in, in other areas and just learning about how evaluation exists in various, you know, all the various forms that it does. Um, yeah, which it turned out to be really, really great for. But I think that was my main interest in signing up was just broadening my horizons a bit. Fantastic. Um... And Tamsin, it would be great to hear more about what your learning goals were, um, whether they differed from Rachel's. No, I was in that um, I really, it was hard to scope, you know, what is evaluation? Um, and not only that, but in the, in the, in the role, in the organisation I'm in and in the sector I'm in, which is domestic violence and homelessness and it's a non-profit, um, no one knew and I, I'm still... Uh, yet to find a lot of people with a lot of knowledge around evaluation in this sector. So um, my, my goals were really to understand, well, how do I do capacity building for myself, but also for my organisation? Um, I was really starting, the organisation was really starting from a low level and, and, and um, trying to understand where, where do I start with it all? Um, how do, I'm, I'm one person still in, in the organization doing evaluation and so you know talking with Florent it became quite clear that I was going to be starting from a very very low level with people and really just start getting people having evaluative thinking and um, moving away from let's do a survey <laughs> which uh, yeah gosh <laughs> they still do to some extent but um, yeah so yeah I'm I think that answered the question. I could go on and on. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so Flo and Duncan, it'd be great to hear a little bit more from you about how you actually practically interacted with your buddy once you got into the program. Um, how did you work together to set up the relationship that you then um, fostered over the course of that program? Sure. Uh, well, uh, so Ray and I live in different bits of New South Wales. So I'm on Darawal country down in Wollongong and Ray's up in Dungog uh, near Newcastle, well, nearish. And um, and so we, we've we never, like we hadn't met in person until the AES conference in Adelaide last year. That was the first time I actually you know, interacted and shook hands. Um, but look, after a couple of video 
calls like this, we drop back to phone and would catch up when um, when it was convenient around kids and work and stuff. Um, and I reckon half of the half of the times when we were talking, we were actually we were just walking, like walk, walking the dog or what have you. Is a habit that I picked up during COVID of um, only do video calls when there's actually like when it's someone who you don't know or you need to share a screen, otherwise just get out and get your steps in. Um, so, so we did that a lot. And, and, and I think what that, what that allowed was, um, uh, was unhurried conversations because you're not looking at the clock and undistracted conversations because you're not sitting there in front of, you know, your distraction machine, um, which, uh, which we all are right now. Great. And lots of nods coming through from Rachel as well. So it obviously worked for you both. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to add another thing I think we did was dinner prep <laughs> because we both, well, I've got little kids, Duncan has kids. So we'd sort of factored in around pickup or, you know, parent life. Um, and I think one time, the first time we did uh, happy hour, which was nice. We had, a, oh, had yeah. a glass of wine and a chat. And then, yeah, as we got to phone, it was walking or dinner prep or cleaning or you know it was it was really good very useful good multitasking and how about you Flo how did you interact with your buddy um so yeah it was interesting to hear Duncan so for us it was um the other way around we 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 leave and work quite close by so we were able to um yeah, have to face face to face meeting really um yeah straight away um and that that helps really um i guess building the, the relationship which is which is critical to a um a mentoring relationship and then first starting um for me to understand you know where where tam was at the organization and also maybe help tam understand what, what she was getting into by trying to express it uh and then progressively identify where it could help um, or bounce ideas and then working on, on very practical um, challenges or examples, um, projects where it could, could provide some practical help. And yeah, then it turned into some, um, yeah, uh, regular catch-ups at the local um, cafe in, in, in Redfern uh, on Thames Way to work. So that was, um, yeah, it was pretty nice. Sounds idyllic. Um, and just a reminder, if you've got your own questions, please drop them in the chat um, and we can get to those as, those as well. Um, Tam, it would be great to hear from you what you got out of the program and how that impacted the work that you do. Yeah, so as Flora was saying, um, you, you know, I, I hit the ground running. I had to start doing stuff straight away and I, I sort of didn't get to share my panic with anyone but Flora. And um, and he was amazing. And he made, uh, I think you were sort of winding down one job before you moved on to new role. So he made himself really available. And, um, you know, in my panic state, I, I needed a lot of visual learning and he was really able to do that. And we drew a lot of graphs and tables together. Um, and I'd say... Uh, one of the really nice things was that um, I was able to really practice some of the tools of evaluation with Laurent, like program logic and the different, I saw the different ways that he approached it and different to how I would approach it. And um, I've still got the, you know, the little scribblings that we did together and at the cafe. Um, it was, yeah, super useful for me to be face-to-face, -face. much prefer that style of learning as well. Um, I think, uh, you know, where I'm at now uh, is really, I mean, when I started the job, I literally made up the role. I made my job description. I made my job title. Um, and um, I, I uh, not long after I started, the organisation got funding for me from, from a, a private foundation. And I've recently met with them um, to to just you know talk about what what I've achieved but you know what's next and um and it was really gratifying to see um that I went from just this small pebble to to actually having a really nice structure which is quite quite bespoke to this organization and 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 quite unique so it's been a really creative experience um I still can't believe you know within a year um 
how how much more of an expert I feel. One of the problems coming into this field in an in a organization a sector where there's not much evaluation done is that everyone just says oh but you're the expert <laughs> and when you're quite new I think it's quite daunting um so um so yeah so I feel like uh I feel like I've achieved my goals and more um uh and I can really see with Laurent's help I, I could see quite early the contribution I was making to the organisation and the reason for me being there. Um, so it was really extremely good for my confidence um, and uh, just very grateful that the timing was right for Florent as well. And it sounds like it was just critical for you settling in to your role and um, building that presence there, which is good timing for you as well. Yes. That's fantastic. Um, what about you, Rachel? What do you get out of the program and, and how has it impacted the way that you see and the way that you do evaluation in your workplace? Um, what did I get out of it? I got, I feel like I, I got a lot out of the program. I um, we, we structured it very sort of, I guess, informally, but it was really useful. It was, so I would kind of think of questions or issues that I had or gaps where I felt I really needed some guidance and um, would raise them with Duncan and we'd talk about them and um, really just just sort of nut it, nut it out together. And that really helped me, um, I think as well, <laughs> it helped doing like keeping busy or walking or, you know, moving through the issues together. It was really useful. Um, and often Duncan would send me things to look at afterwards, like articles or book recommendations, YouTube videos, um, different resources that I would that we'd then follow up on at our next meeting it was kind of this rolling discussion um and i found it useful to just have someone to bounce ideas off about um different study pathways i was looking at to doing looking at doing the masters of evaluation at one point and we talked about whether uh, the pros and cons of doing that or finishing my masters of public health you know just that those kind of where it's good to have a, a sounding board to bounce ideas off um that was very useful um gosh what else I think it was just great to have a good contact the one thing I learned really quickly about Dunk is that he knows everybody in the world I'm like the most connected person so it was really great to be talking and he'd say oh you you have questions about this oh I'll hook you up with so and so or so and so and um I thought whoa this is really really useful and so that was great to have that networking and connections and um yeah, and also just a mate. We we had a lot in common, and we laughed a lot. And um, it's just a, a nice kind of continuing. Hopefully, we haven't caught up much lately because life's been a bit crazy. But um, hopefully, it can, it's a continuing connection. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I think um, like there's probably two other things that I'd I'd kind of comment on the back of that. One of them is just talking about work life balance. Mm. Oh, yeah. um, like not about evaluation technical stuff at all, mm. but just the realities of um, of working from home and, um, you know, parenting and, and all that kind of stuff. So that like the blend of like, you, you, it, you kind of, you do the hokey pokey in this kind of thing, like you put your whole self in, it's not just a really technical coaching around a particular task. It's, uh, and I think that's one of the difference between coaching and mentoring is that coaching is very task driven and can I perform this, um, you know, this thing as opposed to mentoring is much more about kind of life and your whole self in, in your work, or at least it is in the way that I think about it and the way that we we, we did it. Um, and, uh, and, the, like, and the other thing is in terms of being connected, it was just coincidental. There was a role that was advertised that Ray, Ray was interested in and I knew somebody <laughs> who had worked in that organization so she could talk to that person who had knowledge of the organization so that like that was the that was the coincidence and you, you can't always you can't promise that kind of stuff yeah, but I think that, that that probably is the advantage though of having people who have been just ar around a bit um, uh, and I think that that goes to um, Raul you had a question um, about the minimum level of, of ex expertise mentors need to have and I think I would say um, just just a niffy naffy more than than the person who like like not not a lot more 
um, than, the, than, the, than the person who you're, you're, you're buddied up with. Um, and in fact, I think there's, um, there, like it's very true that you don't need to be a fellow of the society to be a mentor. Fun fact, Greg, no longer in the group mentoring program, like that, that's not a requirement there either. They've kind of eased, eased that out a bit. That's just where they started. Yeah. Um, and I, and so I think there's, um, uh, there's lots to be, yeah, there's lots to be said for people who are like mid career, um, uh, evaluators like me being able to spend time with people who are in their kind of first five years of it, like that's gold. And, and that, like, that's what I experienced when I was, when I was, um, young in, in, you know, in, 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 in short shorts, um, that I wanted <laughs> to be able to, you know, feed, feed through. And on that comment just came in in the chat about the personal, more about personality and kind of linked to the one above about matching. Um, correct me if I'm wrong here, Greg, but I think that what came out of the <clears throat> evaluation of the national one was that the ones that were rated to be the most successfully, the most successful mentorship situations were the ones where they they got on and had a lot of common ground in terms of personality and beliefs and more so than working in the same field <clears throat> is that correct i feel like i read that in one of the evaluation reports at some yeah, point I, th I think that's right i think i um heard that too and look, if, yeah. I could, if i could piggyback on a couple of those comments too and rahul i just noticed that you what did you say i wouldn't feel like i could necessarily mentor anyone that probably means you would be ideally qualified to do it because there's some humility i think involved here and it's about shared learning and it's not about being a coaching expert that um, so, you know, I sort of get nervous when people think, well, I'm God's gift to evaluation, you know, someone is going to benefit enormously from, uh, from, from, my, from my wisdom. Um, but when Laura and I kicked this off, I think we had an expectation that this would be a program specifically for um, you know, less senior emerging evaluators, um, um, junior evaluators. And while we certainly had some people like that in the part, there were some that were quite a, a bit more experienced, and we had, some, you know, were able to match them with, with, um, with people that had even more experience. So it's not a one size fits model. And I know someone did pop in a question about how the matching process works. We might come to that um, in a little bit. Yeah, great. Thanks, Greg. Um, and I think I'd like to continue on that theme of the mentors as well, because certainly from my experience, and I was uh, a mentor in the program too, um, it's certainly a two-way street in terms of the mentor continually learning from the buddy as well. Um, and so I'd just like to hear from, from Duncan and Flo as well, just to hear what you got out of the program, because I'm sure, at least from my perspective, there were a lot of lessons that I learned um, throughout the process too. Go, Flo. A lot, a lot. I think um, there's been, you know, uh, studies showing that um, you get you get a lot by giving, um, and and it's also um, yeah. So it's very rewarding, um, and also it's sort of, I mean, and it's the best way to learn. I mean, that's where one of the things that Duncan says a lot is you, by by teaching or explaining things. That's the best way to you know firm up your 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 thoughts. Or your knowledge uh, that helps a lot. The other thing I was thinking is um, it's not because we have a bit more experience that we, we we're not immune to the imposter syndrome, really, uh, and 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 that actually helps to um, have this um, mentoring relationship because then that confirms yourself oh yeah okay actually actually I can, actually I'm useful I know stuff and I, I can help people so that helps you is because you're always the imposter of somebody else so um I mean it depends, depends yeah uh, so 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 we're not immune to that I think that that helped me realize and then you need sort of this sort of um, positive feedback and um, and that's what you're doing is helpful and then you know your stuff so I got and also the other thing I got was um I think somebody touched on the sectors. Uh, it's it's an opportunity to touch on the areas that you're not necessarily, um, or you may be less familiar with. And uh, Tam was in the NGO sector, which I had less less experience with. And in quite a different field as well. Um, if you're looking in primarily education and 
and health mm. and and Tam, did you say you were in domestic violence and, yeah. and homelessness? Mm. Yeah, so we're primarily responding to um, women experiencing DV and homelessness. So um, yeah, very different. But um, yeah, I, I appreciated how Florent was able to translate across. Um, and it did help though that, that Florent, you knew someone in my organization and you know you were local to Redfern as well. So you yeah, you show a lot of mental dexterity. <laughs> oh yeah, from the childcare. That was really <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um I'd be interested, Laura, you said you learned a bit. Um what, what did you learn? Yeah, great question. Um, so although I've been in my organization organization and doing evaluation for a while now I've, I've only worked in the private sector um, whereas my buddy was in um, the department of education and so had like quite a different feel to me but was also in a different um, organization type and, and I think that was really interesting just to get some pers perspective of how evaluation works when you're a part of an internal evaluation unit um, so understanding what the demands and um, constraints were on her I think was really interesting um, also just the different types of evaluations that she did was quite different to how I approach things um, the scale is often quite different um, I also work across a, a broad range of subject areas where she focuses solely on mm -hmm. evaluation being within the department of Ed education she focuses primarily on education um, so just learning some kind of interesting perspectives I think from um from that approach mm. yeah so I, I echo all of that and I think um like there were some great questions that, that Ray was asking herself that were really useful to mull over um anyway like well I think I remember one of the early questions that Ray was, was asking was um uh of all the possible kind of skill sets that you could seek to develop in order to um uh, uh, like thinking about future skill sets in evaluation. Um, what, like, what, what are the emerging areas of workforce need, workforce shortage, um, in 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 evaluation? Kind of like thinking about that, and then thinking about her own interests and what she'd done before and what she was going to do and so on. I think that's a really interesting question. So mm -hmm. we were able to riff on that. Like, what are you seeing? And well, here's what I'm seeing, and you know, and 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 all of those kinds of things. So sometimes simply just the like the topics that the person who's being mentored was is throwing out there they're really interesting things to to mull over um and they then become you know things that you well for me that i was then asking other people when i was catching up with them hey you know what do you reckon are the um, emerging areas of workforce shortage in terms of skill set for for evaluation and i can kind of feed that back to ray and it was just an interesting question on notice for me to have Mm, definitely and that came up with me as well um and i think also more broadly than evaluation but starting to think about um issues like uh managing more junior staff like how does one get exposure to that kind of a role and and how what are the kinds of opportunities that somebody needs to explore at an early stage in their career to keep their opportunities open as they progress so although it, mm. there was a lot of evaluation talk there was also kind of broader um positioning uh yeah. discussions i guess yeah and look that that actually um, comes back to something that for me um like that's a kind of that's a that's an advantage for someone who's so so i don't have any direct reports i run a consulting company where it's me and one other person and we're colleagues and then we bring teams together so i don't have anybody who reports to me in that way so um what that would otherwise mean is like if i did that for 10 years then my my kind of coaching and development skills would wither on the vine if I if I wasn't act, yeah, actively doing this this kind of thing, so I suppose that that's another thing that you could pop in the um, uh, uh, benefits for for mentors category. Yeah, definitely. Um, any more questions from anybody in the audience that they'd like to throw up at the moment? Um, yeah, Louise wants to know about how you do the matching. Yeah, good question. So I think Greg's going to touch on that just after this. Is that right? Um, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'll, I'll come to that. So, great. Um, I just have one question. If nobody's got any others, um, oh, sorry. Claudia had one there actually. Yeah. 
yeah, is the program still ongoing or is this the final evaluation? Uh, great question. So we ran the pilot uh, last year um, that went for about six months. And then some buddies continued, buddy and mentor partners continued to engage over the rest of the year. Some um, relationships kind of naturally found an end. Um, but this is the launch of the second year of the program. So uh, looking to yeah, start a new version with some new buddies and some new mentors. Uh, and the evaluation was of the pilot that took place last year. And, and I, that point about um, we did do a post program follow up to see you know whether people were continuing and and um, as Laura said can't remember the figures off the top of my head but it was a reasonable proportion a pleasing proportion but we did actually as we will with this one put us a hard closure so that there is some formality when people can actually consciously say yep yeah, let's finish up now or yeah why don't we keep going or whatever it's in, again these are two adults making um, decisions about you know what they what they want to do but. Nevertheless, having something where you say, well, this is going to run through till December 31 or whatever. Okay, well, just before we um, end this part of the session, I hand back over to Greg. I'd be curious to hear what everyone would say to either Flo and Duncan to new mentors that are thinking to sign up this year or, or Rachel and, and Tam for new buddies. Um, so maybe if we start with Rachel. Oh, um, <laughs> I was just thinking about that. Um, what would I say to a new buddy? I think just just keep in mind the, the things that we've spoken about that have been really effective, like thinking of particular questions that I, I guess thinking of what you want to get out of it and coming to your mentor with particular questions to address gaps that you feel that you have and not feeling that you have to sort of ask um you know stick to a particular structure or you know it, it's a re the program you can design it completely to to be of the most benefit to you and I think what you get out of it is what you put into it and um, it can be very flexible we were meeting I think fortnightly at the start um, but you could meet more often than that or less often like I think it, having the the whole premise that it's mentee driven is quite good um in that sense and then it's great it's obviously great that the mentors get a lot out of it too but mm. i think in terms of guiding the um the content of what you discuss it's have have a i think reflect and have a think about where you would really benefit um and then and then just ask those questions and don't be afraid of or feeling silly or anything i think just mm. go for it that's what they're, they're there for and yeah it's a very supportive environment and um tam how about you what would you say oh similar to rachel there are no dumb questions and um you know it's a it it uh uh it has to be a safe space where you you, you trust that your mentor is not going to be judging you um and i definitely felt that um and um just to be brave in, within the relationship because it is designed to be led by you the mentee um and also similar to Rachel, I would also really um, keep a note of, of what are you what what are you going to get out of it? Because I did find that I would get sidetracked with Florent and not by you, Florent, but by myself and and my pressing concerns and you know um, not get to the, the bits that I really needed to get to. And um, just to keep them in mind. So yeah, this, and and go for it. Have a have a go, and if it doesn't work, that's fine too. You know, you don't. It's not like um, it, it has to work out. Great, thank you. Uh, and Duncan, you're off mute, so you're next. <laughs> uh, what would I say to somebody who's considering putting their hand up as a mentor? Uh, I would say, um, if you're even considering it, do it. Um, and don't be put off, uh, like, like put your hand up but, and, and offer, um, and don't be put off by, I think, you know, like Raul's, you know, sense of, oh, you know, I, I just don't think I could, you don't know how valuable your own ex expertise and experience is. Um, uh, and it's, it's always surprising to find that what kind of, what it is that other people find valuable about what you've done. Um, and uh, 
And then I think the other thing is don't, um, but don't do it if you feel like you're going to be pouring from an empty cup. Um, like if your if your work is so, or your life is so um, kind of caught up in like emotional load or like really heavy load that you don't have headspace for someone else's, um, uh, like you know, like to to hold that that person and, and their career gently and and put in some time, then then don't do it. Um, like it it doesn't take a lot of time, but it but it does take um, a uh, like so when when Ray was saying fortnightly fortnightly became once every three weeks became once a month. So but but you but it does take a, a bit of time and you need to hold that space and you need to kind of be available in in that way for that time. It it tends not to leak in my experience into other things like it is reasonably contained, but you do want to. Um, um, finish what you start. So if you've got a really chaotic year in front of you, then maybe that's not the year to do it. Thank you. And Flo, lucky last. Yeah. Yeah, interesting uh, what you just said, Duncan. I was I was about to say, uh, yeah, you, you, yeah. If you're considering it, same. You should you should do it. It's a, it's a more than worthwhile investment of time. But I tend to agree. Actually, yes, you need to be on the in the right. Um, Mind, mindset like um you comfortable in your space and having the the space in your mind to um properly allocate to somebody else um yeah it's 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 true I, it's but it's also worthwhile just from a, a human and relationship perspective i uh, really like the point of fact, the fact that it's, it's a it's not task task oriented and a lot of the work we do on our in our daily jobs are task oriented whether consulting or as part of a, an existing you know um government or, or you know private organization it's task oriented so having this broader uh, whilst engaging with work um it's you know have the, the the broader vision really um and and it's and it's you know personally rewarding firm up your your uh, in, uh, knowledge and your area of expertise you have something to say and you may end up uh, role talking about theater and that's and that's and that's great i think yeah, so if you are in the right um mind space in your in your work um yeah i think you should you should go for it because you'll you'll get a lot out of it differently yeah I'd like add, add something if that's right. Um, I feel like uh, this program is a springboard to a, a community of practice. And I know that the AES hosts some, some communities. I don't personally feel like I'm part of one. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd love to um, love to be part of one. And yeah, I don't know whether how to, how to facilitate that or uh, whether that's whether that's possible. Meaning, um, as uh, I think Duncan was saying, that it's a it's a two way uh, learning experience. Like I really feel like, um, no, I don't have a ton of experience with evaluation, but I do feel like I could mentor somebody in the right circumstances. Because, and why would I do it? Is because I would learn so much, and I would learn, one of the things I would learn is what I do know and what I do bring, and it's not just my evaluation experience. It's my, you know. My, all my work and, and academic experience as well. So, um, but a, a community of practice, I, I don't know how that would function, but um, that is something I'm craving to, to have a continuing um, experience of being able to have these sorts of forums besides, uh, besides webinars and so on, yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. I think that would be a really useful way of continuing, continuing and expanding on on the program um, and for me it would be keeping in touch with people in different sectors and getting that mm -hmm. um, just that kind of informal area to discuss different ideas and because that's really useful I find in the workplace but again that's in your own little bubble it would be great to be able to brainstorm or just like Dunk was saying before you know what emerging technologies are you guys using or mm. just those kind of conversations would be really good. Yeah, so that like that to me is one of the differences, the distinctions between one-to-one uh, -one buddying mentoring relationship and the group mentoring project, which the AES has been doing over the last couple of years. And so just a little um, uh, uh, kind of window in there, I actually threw my hand in, uh, in the group mentoring program as well as a mentee. 
because I was thinking like, okay, how do you provide mentoring if you don't, if you're not receiving mentoring, like how do you give something you're not getting? Um, and, and uh, Rick Cummings, who's an AES fellow said, well, yeah, that, yeah, but you, your experience, like, how about you, like jump in with me and I'll mentor you in mentoring, but then we can mentor this group together. And that's now the way that the, that program runs. It now has a, there's a, there's a mentor and an associate mentor in, in, in each of the groups. Um, and, uh, and I feel like the, the community of practice outcomes that you were talking about, Tam, like they, they they fall off the tree in a group in a group mentoring context in a way that the one on one like there you get it's really targeted about you and it's very individualized and it's you know and it's really there's a sense of um, kind of uh, intimacy and confidentiality in the relationship that you don't necessarily get in the group environment so I feel like there's different um, there's different fruit from different ways of uh, of structuring um, the the environments. Um, so that, I mean, that, that's just a reflection on having, having seen both. And I feel like there's benefits in, um, in both. But that's very valuable. Thanks. I'm sure Flo was taking notes vigorously about that suggestion because we're always open to ways <laughs> trying to do things and do, do some different stuff. So, um, we may, we may well come back to you and explore that and uh, again, test out the interest. Great. Well, I think we're at the end of that session so happy to wrap up and, and hand it over to you Greg to go through the remaining slides. Okay and this is going to be the more mechanical stuff but it will maybe um, unearth a few more questions so please jump in at any point and can either in the chat or just there's not that many of us trying to take them. Okay. Okay so um, eligibility who can get in this? Um, for buddies, we do uh, restrict it to New South Wales members only or those that are willing to join. So it's a shameless attempt to build our numbers. Um, but we are very happy um, to have uh, you know, people from across the um, across the, the, the nation um, involved as evaluators. Obviously, that would then mean it is a um, you know going to be online um, experience um, as well. And we were having some very informal chats with other states to see whether they wanted to you know bring this together as a you know cross state or even a national program um but you know but they weren't ready for that so we thought look we'll, we'll just go ahead and do our nothing here again but if we can get some people and i know we've got someone from the gold coast today so very happy for you uh, to be involved okay so the launch today um eois and applications will close on uh, march the 17th and i'll talk about how to do that in a moment and then the matching. So this mysterious uh, science art craft of matching. Last year that involved uh, Laura and me uh, um, just putting getting two piles of paper really and independently saying, well, you know, Bob looks really good with, um, you know, Betty, etc. Because the EOIs, the applications, actually say, well, what what's your experience? What's your interest? What do you want to get out of this? And then you get some specific questions about. Who you might want to be matched with? Is it you know based on gender, or it might be a First Nations evaluator, or it might be about a particular sector? So going back to some of the questions that people asked, some people, although I don't, not many, I think last year from memory, you know, didn't didn't express the preference. I really want someone who works in my sector, you know, in in um, environmental management or health or whatever. But all those options are available to you, and that that sort of specificity helps helps uh, help Laura and I then go okay. Um, that you know, looks like, um, as it turned out, Laura and Laura <laughs> would be a really good, uh, really good uh, match. What we do then is, and this is all open and people have to uh, you know, agree to this, is we say we made a preliminary match uh, between you know, A and B. So we go to the buddy first and say, look, it looks like um, you know, uh, Greg Masters might be um, a good mentor for you, to, you know, and send send that person. Um, my CV, sorry, my application and say, does that look okay for you? And I think we had all 11 people said, yeah, that looks great. Um, and similarly, uh, just double checking with the, the mentor that they're okay about um, the person that they've been nominally matched to. So that's all done. It's just as a check to make sure that, you know, the, the, the matching we've done. 
And it were, we were very nervous about this, um, frankly, because um, didn't know how easy it would be, but it worked out to be um, pretty, pretty straightforward. Now, whether that happens again, I'm not sure. And I did see a question from, our, from Rahul again about, about just that, which was um, how far this approach to support evaluation capability across the public sector in general. Um, I'm assuming entirely voluntary. Yes, it is entirely voluntary. Um, um, or could it should be example for a paid gig? Well, I think we're doing it as a you know, New South Wales AES committee as a you know, voluntary activity. That's yeah, you know, um, that's something else for someone to think about. Uh, does each man or commit to what just one, or could it be more? Um, I think we sort of informally wrote the rule last year. It was one on one, and I think we'd probably do the same same this year as well. Um, just <laughs> given that it is a voluntary one. It's interesting. We did have one mentor who was also a buddy last year. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So yes. it it does show that it very much goes both ways there. After the that matching process I described, um, sometime in mid-April, we would have a kickoff workshop. So we were trying to pick a time, which is always challenging, when everyone would be available. And that's a chance just to put a bit more meat on the skeleton that we've talked about um, today and around expectations and the like. And then um, really um, um, get on with it with a formal end, as I said, of the um, end of November, but with the prospect if people choose. Um, to continue. Now we we will touch base. And when I say we, um, Talia. So let's wave there, Talia. So Talia is going to be the uh, contact person, um, and Talia's just started working with me at, at Nexus. So this is all new to her, and I'm probably picking up a bit more about it today. Uh, but Talia is actually going to be the sort of the contact person for applications, and um, but also just touching base semi regularly with people. Uh, to check how it's going, if there are any issues, any support we can provide. But again, really need to stress that this is a, a you know, a, a, a slow, a slight touch program that we don't have. It is voluntary, um, and Laura and I put in quite a bit of effort last year, willingly. And, and Laura, you know, went the extra mile being being a mentor. But I'm sure you all appreciate that. You know, there's only only so much we can do with that. So we're really saying, as we've heard from people today, they set the direction um, and take control of the learning. So there we are, Laura and Talia to review, review, review the EOAs and make the um, preliminary matches. Buddy asked if matches suitable, if yes, evaluator is asked to confirm. And Can I just jump in there, Greg? Just wanted to comment that I found that EOI process um, very useful in terms of prompting the reflection of uh, where I would get the most benefit from and gaps in knowledge and what was on the form. I can't remember all of the detail, but you mentioned some before, um, what areas would you like to their, your um, buddy to work in or um, different interests and all of those things. I thought that was really com like completing that form was quite useful for me going, oh yeah, I, you know, I hadn't thought of that. What, what would be most useful for me? Okay, so yeah. That's, that's really good. And, and again, it makes the matching process easier, easier the more specific people are about what their expectations are. Um, so if you know if you want to really get into your uh, you know, uh, multivariate analysis of variance, um, um, you know, you're, you're obviously going to have to be matched up with someone who's a statistical whiz. So you can see there that people were generally um, satisfied uh, with the with the, the matching process and that, that was borne out in the, the length of the relationships. So time to make that's been touched on a couple of times. Uh, once or twice a month over six months as a guide. Some people met more frequently, as you heard from, from Dunk. They're about, uh, you know, a bit more early on. I think that's probably a good rule of thumb. And then, you know, but again, pacing is entirely up to you. And uh, and this is an important thing. For whatever reason, um, the thing can be folded um, and without any repercussions or, you know, whatever. So it might be change of job or change in time commitments. Really encourages people have said that the mentor avoid that as much as possible, but things do happen. And I think we did have one pair, uh, you know, fold because of our changing work and, and other family circumstances, and that's fine. So that's just going to be part of the game. There's not, you're not sort of locked into a contractual obligation here. And as I said, uh, Talia will be checking in occasionally. Uh, just before you move on, Greg, I think Duncan's got a comment 
he'd like to make. Oops, is Duncan frozen at the wrong moment? Hi, Duncan, can you hear us? I can now, sorry, it was just saying my connection was unstable. Yeah, uh, just as uh, Laura which... was handing over to you. <laughs> Oh yeah, so um, sometimes you don't know what you want, um, and and I I wouldn't want people to get the impression that you have to have like a um, really mapped out career plan and and you know exactly what you want from your mentor and like you're really super organised because sometimes sometimes what you um, where you're at is to say I feel tired, I feel frustrated um, in, in what I'm doing, I feel stuck, um, and I feel like. Uh, I don't know what is around the corner. And so what I want is somebody to help me navigate that stuff. About, and I don't have anybody to help me navigate that stuff. Then chances are like a mentoring relationship, like you, you haven't necessarily um, kind of mapped out, this is exactly what I want, but you're just kind of saying, this is the situation that I'm in. Um, and, and what I'd like is somebody who has experience in this sector to help me navigate this. That for me, there's heaps you can do with that as a, as a mentor. And part of what you're gonna do is help people work out what is going to be helpful for themselves um, and, and help people identify good questions to reflect on in order to help work that out. So I think there's a, there's a, there's a layers thing that, um, that, um, I think when, when you've got somebody who's really organized in their mind and they're really clear about what they want, then fantastic, you play it from there. But then if someone's not, then you just, you play it from wherever it is. Like, like that, you can't pretend that you're in a different situation than, than you're in. You just play it from, from where, where that is. And a good mentoring relationship will honor um, whatever starting point you, you, you're at. Yeah, I think that's super advice. And it actually makes me think I should have um, put my hand up as a buddy. Okay, um, and there you are. You can see that sort of once a month type thing, a little bit more, is was pretty common what people did. And uh, the vast majority, given circumstances of last year, but just the geographical separation of some people uh, were on online. And I think we've already had uh, these confidential results have already been um, de-identified as a result of our flows revelations. Uh, <laughs> um, but I'm sure you don't mind too much. We're on the same page at least. <laughs> <laughs> so um, apply. There is a form on the AES website, or probably the easier way to get it is from, uh, from Talia. So that's um, her email address there, um, or hunt me down or flow down or what, um, whatever. Um, and more information, um, you know, either Talia or Laura. I think Laura's going to take more of an administrative role in it this year. Um, um, and I'm going to actually put my hand up as a um, as a as a mentor this time. So actually immerse myself in it. Um, and we've already got a few people that have started to express interest. So I can really encourage you. My 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 other great fear about the typically the matching process is that we don't get sufficient numbers. So I um, really encourage people to to jump in. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm going to stop sharing there and hand back to Laura. My yep, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Nope, there we go. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity to talk through this with you today. Um, we're really excited about your interest in the program. And as Greg said, just really encourage you to, um, to take part, um, to spread the word amongst your colleagues and, and friends as well. Um, we would love to get as many people involved as we can. Um, so please spread the word. Um, are there any questions before we wrap up the session today that you haven't been able to ask? I may just add something in response to um, Raul's suggestion. It's interesting around, well, that, that, that I mean, this whole program looks super interesting and shouldn't we build that as part of, the, you know, across the public service in general? We're thinking about that, yes, definitely. I'm just wondering if it's those big organizations or you know, uh, bureaucracies in the in the, the the white broad sense. I'm not sure if they're well suited. Maybe, maybe it could be if you have an organisation that is open to that and to often a sort of a fluid space for this kind of of things, like really making it like a mentoring program. Not because we we've done that. Yes, with the 
you know, ACT Academy actually was quite interesting, um, but it's still, you know, very in task or, you know, project frame, which is, you know, because the organizations, you know, you need to say, okay, what, what, what is it going to help you with practically, whereas in this sort of more, you know, mentoring and then even more informal budding program, it's, it's, it's fluid. You don't necessarily know what you're going to ask for. You don't, you don't, you don't, you know, don't see the next uh, hurdle. So, if you have an organization that is is happy and open to provide this you know license to be fluid um and and open definitely uh, but maybe that's the space for professional organizations like ours to 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 be um uh, i think yeah thanks we have got a, a thumbs up there um, just wanted to touch on Magnolia's question in the chat. Um, so we do ask that you be AES members to be involved in the program. Um, so, and yeah, um, and that's for mentees and for mentors as well, I believe, Greg. Um, that's right, yeah. yeah. And if anybody is interested, you know, um, um, in applying, and which is no, no commitment, and if you apply, it doesn't mean you're committed, um, Feel free to shoot me your email in the uh, chat now, and that'll be a quick way of getting your forms as well. Yeah, and and just here in the the conversation, Greg, I think one thing I would say is if anyone's on the edge of thinking, um, would I put my hand up to be a mentor on this one? One thing that we could offer, or well, certainly like I'd be happy to offer, is mentoring and mentoring. So like, so like, you see, see what I'm getting? It's getting a bit meta, but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah but like that might be the thing. This is saying like, well, if I had somebody who could ride shotgun with me as I set this up and that I could debrief on how the mentoring thing is going, then I'd be happy to do it. Awesome. Um, yeah. Then like, that's surely that's the kind of thing that we could, you know, just make happen on the side. Yeah. And then you'll learn how to talk with hands. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that constructive feedback Flo. <laughs> that's a very generous offer thank you Duncan Great. Well, okay, so we've got a couple of people pop things in there um, Daniel do you just want to shoot through your um, email if that's okay if you're happy to do that or subsequently that's fine you can yeah if that works you can do it in the mentee but, uh... Yeah, I'm just popping it through on the mentee now. Brilliant. That works. Oh, okay. And you've got the opportunity to suggest some topics for, for future seminars as well. We're always welcoming IDs. Oh, okay. I missed the uh, mid mid one. Thanks, Claire. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming today. I think we're ready to close. Um, unless there's anything else you wanted to say, Greg? No, look, I'll hang around if anybody does want to have a quick one-on-one -on -one chat about it or, or about life in general. Um, otherwise, yeah, thanks for your interest.